Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Tableau Zen Master Luke Stanky. Before we start this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below to get the latest content from the Data Coach YouTube channel. And be sure to check out our website too. Sign up for courses and you know uh, learn from one-on-one -on -one experts. Actually get mentoring there on the site and uh, get badges for your LinkedIn profile. Who doesn't like badges? Help scale up, really make uh, your profile shine. 100% for sure. Anyway, in this video, we are going to create a spiralogram heat map. Let's try that again. A spiralogram heat map. And with that, uh, it, it's basically concentric circles that are slowly growing on each other. And we're going to put dots along the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Tableau's 2020.4 version. And we're going to use Superstore with the same version. And we're going to make this heat map and basically what we see is a dot for every single week of the year in this data source using the order date field and then each dot represents the week and the sales and then the color is the profit ratio so we can see both sales uh, how it increases throughout a year and then it sort of resets every year so if sales continue to grow and then at the beginning of the year it tails off so this is the first week of the year and then like a clock, it goes all the way around, except instead of by hours, it's by days of the year. And once it's back at the top, it's near the end of the year. We use one special adjustment to our data. We don't use a standard date field. So if I look at standard dates, if you think about the first week of the year, it sort of encompasses part of the end of last year, most of the time. It's not always that case. Sometimes it starts on a Sunday, but not always. That means the first week, and the last week, frankly, are shortened weeks. And we can adjust our data by using the ISO standard. So the ISO standard for dates will start the year on, you know, whatever the January 1st is of a calendar year, that first Sunday is actually the start of the ISO or ISO calendar year. And that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use ISO for this. So if we do that, one thing you'll notice is week 53 here, what happens is we change it to ISO year for both weeks and the year. So we have our weeks and the number of years. We see that week 53 barely exists. It only happens every once in a while versus in other years where it doesn't even get to week 53 because it's stacked up so nice in the data source. So to create this spiral gram, we need to calculate the radians, the degrees in this spiral gram, and we also need to calculate the height of the circle. And then the height is just going to constantly be changing just a little bit from week to week. So let's start with the radians. We're going to just go in and create a new calculated field here. So just click create calculated field. Now let's call this radians and I have one already created. So I'm just going to add a space after it from here. What we want to do is create our calculation and we're going to start with 2 pi so if you remember 2 pi r that's sort of what we're doing we're doing the inside here and they'll calculate our radians it's going to be between 2 pi and some value that needs to be between 0 and 1. so the last value is between 0 and 1 and i'm going to really space this out you don't need to do this it's just to make it easier for us to read we need to normalize our field. And what we're going to normalize here is our fixed weeks. So our ISO week. So we'll say ISO week. Uh, and I'll put the, this in parentheses as well. ISO week of order date. So inside of ISO week, we'll put order date. And we'll say minus one. So our first week of the year will actually be zero. And our last week, if it's 52 weeks, will be 51. Because if we don't adjust this, the last week looks like it's the starting point for our visualization here. And we don't want that. We don't want overlapping points. And then the denominator is then the number of weeks in a year. And we need this to vary by the number of weeks that might exist. If you recall that 2017, 2018, and 2019 all had 52 weeks and then 2020 had 53 weeks. So we're going to say fixed on ISO year. Notice again, all ISO. So ISO year of order date, and we'll do the colon. So everything to the right is simply the max ISO week of order date. So the max, the highest value, the biggest, the largest week number, and that's it. That's our calculation. This is gonna say that I have this calculation already created, I practiced it ahead of time. I'll put a little extra space after it here and we can hit Okay, there we go. Radians, they're now calculated. And we just need to calculate the height. 
and the height's a fun one as well. So just a new calculated field, let's call this spiral height. And what we'll say is we'll first do our year calculation and then we'll also adjust by week. So we'll just, you know, we're gonna put some comments in here. We need to do some adjustment by year and also an adjustment by week and then like an overall adjustment to make sure that we, you know, we're not starting at zero. And our year calculation here is just going to be our ISO year, very much like we did last time. If you did watch the ring heat map or the circular heat map, we'll say ISO year of order date minus the fixed calculate, or we actually, we don't even need fixed. We can just say the uh, fixed calculation of the min ISO year order date. So basically the smallest year, the smallest value. This is gonna make our largest value, in this case three, and our lowest value zero. Again, starting from zero, we don't want that. Add a plus sign after it so that we can ignore the comments here and we can go like to the next line when we have some calculation here. So we'll have our years and now we need to adjust for months. And just like we did radians, it's very, very, very similar in how we're going to calculate our radians for this part of the view. We're just gonna say from here, let's see if I can just kind of do this off the top of my head. We're gonna do a parenthesis and we're gonna say ISO week. And we are going to then go uh, order date minus one. And we'll divide this by the same fixed calculation we did earlier, which was for ISO year of order date. Let's add, um, and we'll say the max ISO week of order date. So this is going to be the same numerator, same denominator as we were sort of thinking about earlier. And I think I need one more parenthesis on there. There we go. So this is going to incrementally increase each week without changing the year. And uh, we, we're just going to, after all of this, we'll just put a plus sign, by the way. And then we're just gonna add four, just like we did in the previous video. It started, didn't start at zero. We're gonna start at four, work around the circle. So when we go around one full time, the ending value will be five, and then the starting value will be five for the next year. So I hope we've got this knocked down. So just to show you it again, we're gonna do ISO year, order date, minus the minimum value. And then we're just going to adjust incrementally. What this is doing is, moving up one tiny week at a time here. And I do want to just realize, I want to wrap that in parentheses as well, that minus one needs to go with the ISO week of the order date in a separate parentheses. So I would have, yeah, you know, we would have messed that up if we had not caught that here. So now we're good. I'm going to also just put this in the comments so you'll be able to see it and then hit okay here. So we've got these calculations now figured out. We just need to build our X and Y spiral calculations. You see I have two here, but we want to do it on our own. So let's do a new sheet. So here we go, new sheet. Let's create a new calculation and hopefully it'll just work. So we'll call it X spiral. This is going on columns. So we'll say spiral height times cosine of a radians. And I believe I created this calculation for radians. I'm gonna copy this calculation. It's gonna go into our Y calculation as well. So X spiral is created. I'm just gonna hold down control and bring this value out on columns. And uh, I'll change this to a dimension. So you can sort of see we've got a lot of ticks going on here. And now another calculation, like I said, Y now, Y spiral. Paste that in, change cosine to sine. That's it. Very simple calculations going on rows and columns. And uh, you know, I held down my option button on my Mac here and that creates my spiral. You can see it's spiraling, but I think what I wanna do is swap my X and Y axes. The reason I'm gonna do that is you'll see in a second is that this dot starts actually going backwards. And what I wanna do is start at like a clock, start from 12 o'clock and then go forwards. But if, and if I just swap my axes here, my X becomes my Y, my Y becomes my X. I have that spiral going on. From here, 
Let's just change our mark type to circle. Let's go find sales. We'll place that out on to our size and our profit ratio. You can go on to color to go with it. This is the next part, very familiar. You've heard me say before, let's get rid of all the extra lines. There are four different line types. I'm always gonna say to go remove. So click on lines after you choose formatting, remove your grid lines, remove your zero lines, remove your axis rulers, and remove your axis ticks. Also, if you have uh, row dividers and column dividers, which we are about to add, we'll wanna remove those, but we're not quite yet ready for that. So we've got this built out. What we want is a line now to connect this together. It's not super intuitive looking at it right now, even though it's not a perfect circle. If I sort of shape it up, it's still difficult to track. Like I have to follow the full circle to do comparisons. So let's just connect everything together with a line. Click on X spiral, hold down your control button and duplicate X spiral and place it side by side. So now we have two chart types, right click, and then make a dual axis chart from there. So we're just dual accessing these spirals. So now they are overlapping, but we do want to synchronize these axes on that second marks card. You can just leave it alone. You don't even need to touch anything. It's actually set up fine. The leftmost marks card for X spiral, that first X spiral, remove sales, remove profit ratio, and the sort of the dots have more or less gone away. What we wanna do is double click and type in here date trunk of week of order date so we're going to get the week of the order date you'll see it just says week here if i change my mark type from circle to line and then i take week and i put that on path you'll see everything sort of comes together except it looks if you like zoom in here take a look at some of these dots they look like they're bouncing back and forth. That's because they are. We need to change that background to also be an ISO week. So you just, to do that, right click on that week of order date that we created, that calculation, that's our line path and change it to ISO week based. And that'll straighten out all those little bumps that are kind of hanging out there. And we just turn the size down and that's our spiral gram. We just cheat the formatting a little bit here. I'm just gonna right click and copy my formatting and then right click and paste my formatting back on 16 and I can just right click, uncheck show header, right click, uncheck show header and that's it. That's the spirogram. Oh wait, no, Luke, do you see what's going on here everybody? The lines are over the top. Why is it doing that? Well, if that happens for you, you can just right click on any of the axes and move the marks either to the front or the back. That'll change the order for us. Now we're good to go. Right click and uncheck show header and that is our spiral gram heat map it's very interesting because now i can track the change over time and you know at some point we go into the next year and it doesn't have to be a, a dramatic shift right if we go back and look at the ring heat map i don't have to just stop right here and then jump up i can just sort of slowly follow those values and that's the benefit of the spirogram heat map. And you know, frankly, one of the best parts of this whole visualization is we practice our geometry going back. And also we don't need to do any fancy densification with our data. We can just work with it as it is. And the more data we get, the more years we have, the more spirals we're gonna have. And I could even make those tighter if I wanted to, but I, I really like where we're at right here with this visualization. Anyway, that's this video. If you did enjoy, please like this video. Down in the comments, I have just like a real simple question for you. Are you gonna use this visualization or will you prefer a different type of heat map? Go ahead, uh, write down in the comments down below which you prefer. You gonna use this one, yes or no? I, like, I just don't know if it's going to be useful, um, but I, I, I think mathematically or practice for Tableau, it definitely works in uh, everybody's advantage. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next one. Like I said, be sure to like, hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Uh, and we, I certainly appreciate you continuing to watch these videos. We'll catch you in the next one.